Stand up, New York Giant fans. I am super excited. I've got uh, some of the best, in my opinion, the best. I, the podcast, I'm not a huge podcast listener, but I do listen to Talk the Giants whenever I can. Bobby and Justin do a phenomenal job. And, of course, if you guys watch my channel, you're familiar with Mike. And even if you don't and you're on YouTube, you're probably very familiar with Mike. Mike does a great job over there. Always love working with him. And today we're going to jump into one of my favorite topics. Um, I try when I think it's appropriate to go out of my way to defend Dave Gettleman. And when I think it's appropriate to bash him, I'll bash him. But this should be a very fun episode. I'm sure that we all have our various opinions. He seems to be the probably the most uh, – what's the word I'm trying to get at here? Uh, polarizing. Polarizing figure with the New York Giants. You're either on one side or the other. It's very rare that you're in the middle, but some people I'm sure are. Um, but let's start with Bobby, and then we'll go to Justin, then we'll go to Mike. Bobby, what's going on, man? Thanks for popping on. Yeah, man, we just finished recording, so it's, you know, we're pretending that we weren't just, you know, talking for the last hour and a half, but <laughs> I've been doing pretty good. How are you guys? Yeah, that's right. Yes, I should say that. We are going to be releasing all three podcasts at the same time. So if you're watching this one first, I'm going to put the links to both YouTube channels below, along with their Twitter accounts. Go on over there, check out the episode on Mike's, check out the episode on Talking Giants. In which on we just talked about Leonard Williams and Dalvin Thompson along with Daniel Jones. And on Mike's, we're going to be talking about uh, Joe Judge as well as the wide receiver uh, and I think the cornerback, uh, cornerback two position. So go over there and check that out. So I should, I probably should have said that first. But uh, <laughs> Justin, go ahead, my man. Chris, hello. Mike, hello. Bobby Skinner, hello. It's uh, great to be talking Giants with everybody here today. I'm honored to be here honored to be on um we're winning it's a lot of fun when's the last time we won two games in a row we're gonna win three games in a row in the last oh, four yeah. weeks after cincinnati we're gonna we're gonna be winners uh, we're gonna be three and oh in the last four weeks and uh the giants are gonna win the nfc east and there's gonna be uh you know we're, we may talk today oh if gettleman's gonna get fired if we have a top five draft pick da, 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 da. too bad too bad we ain't having a top five draft pick we're winning the nfc east love it love the optimism i love it justin mike go ahead my man um honestly i'm trying to do some fantasy football commissioner stuff i mean i am just so off topic right now i mean am i introducing myself or where are we at right I'm now gonna, I, well, you don't even need to everybody knows who mike is mike tonight okay. great job over that by the way i just watched your odell becker video it was phenomenal but uh we're going to talk about your favorite topic and th i think this is going to be probably one of the more interesting podcasts of the three that we do because i know we're conflicting um <laughs> i am not sure on bobby and justin i think it's gonna be a really interesting podcast though um, I'll start with just bringing up the whole Dave Gettleman topic. And then, of course, we're going to transition into the offensive line, which I think Bobby's going to do a great job of. He always does a great job with the uh, film breakdown, being that he's a former offensive lineman. Um, but let's start with Dave Gettleman. Gettleman, of course, took over this job in 2018. We know the whole story. Jerry Reese with, in my opinion, a, abysmal draft after abysmal draft over about a five- or six-year span. I think most Giant fans agree that in 2015, when they fired Coughlin, they probably should have had a fresh start. They didn't elect to do that. Then 2018, Gettleman takes the job, and they tried to rebuild and win at the same time. Some people will put more of the blame on Gettleman. Some people put more of the blame on Mara. 2019 comes along, and the Giants start the rebuild. They draft Daniel Jones and so on and so forth, and now we're here in 2020. We hire Joe Judge, and uh, the team's starting to show some promise under Gettleman. So we're going to talk about Dave Gettleman. We're going to talk about Joe Judge and maybe who you want to give more credit to, whatever it may be. But, uh, yeah, let's start there. Um, let's start with Justin. Justin's next to me this way. We'll talk about it with him. Give me your thoughts on Gettleman in terms of his approach to building a football team um, and what you feel his overall job has been and also factor in what he inherited, a bad cap situation, um, aging veterans that he had to get rid of, so on and so forth. I originally wanted to Quentin Tarantino this and start at the end and start at the end and then might work my way back to the beginning. But since you prefaced your question in a certain way, I feel like I have to start at the beginning and I don't like it. Um, I don't like how I'm going to have to start at the beginning. Um, you can start at the end if you want. No, no, we'll start at the beginning because that's how you preface the question. Question, Chris. <laughs> so 2018. Oh, man, what a what a fun time because we come from the Eli benching. Right. We come from the Eli benching late in 2017, where we're really if I had to pinpoint a moment where the where why almost the Giants are where they are right now. I honestly think it's that Eli benching and not just the decision to bench him, but the decision to start Geno over um, Davis Webb. Yeah. And then the backlash that the fans gave 
and how Mara kind of caved in. So all of the kind of ways that the Giants have, in my opinion, strayed for the next two years in some ways, I think are directly related, related to that. So we won't go step by step. But, you know, uh, over free agency at the time, I did. I was fine with that Nate Solder move, you know, average player, um, but did spend a lot of money. I don't necessarily know if I really like the the cap narrative that Gettleman didn't have a lot of cap room because you did see the moves that he made. He gave a three-year contract to Omame. He gave what was virtually a one-year deal to Stort, but I won't really count that as, oh, that was a big cap move. Um, yeah. He did go out and he did sign Nate Solder, which at the time Nate Solder was the highest paid offensive lineman in NFL history while all towards building up, re-signing Oda Beckham Jr. So the cap space, while it wasn't great, it wasn't as bad, I feel like, as some people like to paint it out to be. So that's part Fair. one. And then in 2018, the singular most move that I still disagree with uh, uh, what Dave Gettleman did to don't this day. It. Don't say it. I don't. I really, I really don't want to go full in and have a whole screaming match. Argument. I hate I don't, BJ Hill. You're about to find out. Oh, yeah. Um, the worst is is a uh, is, is Saquon Barkley. I, I would not have drafted a running back um, at the time. I, I would have tried to find a solution at quarterback. Um, clearly, you know, you don't just draft a quarterback to draft a quarterback. Um, but I think just uh, having such a valuable pick at number two in 2018, that is still the most valuable draft pick that we have had since we had the Eli Manning pick. That was the most valuable pick. Well, actually, Lawrence Taylor, uh, because L we traded up to get Eli. We, we didn't uh, have the first pick. So that's technically, right. Lawrence Taylor. But yeah. That's right. So the And the fact that we had that opportunity, like you said, Chris, the fact that we had that opportunity we did it and we spent it on a running back, Generational or not, I don't necessarily uh, approve of that, and I think a lot of things have kind of gone downhill from there when other uh, uh, assets could have been put in other areas. But overall, I'll kind of skip around a little bit. I love what Gettleman did this offseason. It's a shame that I feel like it took him two years to really not just make good moves here and there, but have moves that actually affect wins and losses on a football field. You know, it's a shame that it did take two years because I loved what he did this offseason. I love the roster that he's kind of uh, uh, compiled, especially on the defensive side of the ball. When we were not expecting this defense to really compete, they took what was Antoine Bethea, Alec Ogletree, a lot of certain bad moves, and they flipped them into guys that can be here for uh, a, a good amount of time. They flipped it into... Julian Love. They flipped it. They flipped it into McKinney. They flipped it into Peppers with the Beckham trade, and obviously Blake Martinez. Um, and hopefully we can, you know, have Tate Crowder stick around for a little bit. So, very quickly, I know I skipped a lot of parts there. Um, that's kind of like my overall thoughts on Gettleman. It's a shame that it took three years to have a full off season of moves that fully results in what we feel is hopeful play for the Giants. Okay, I, I think that's fair. Now, the one question I want to ask you, the follow up question. Who do you think is more responsible for the Barkley pick, Gettleman or Mara? Because in my opinion, Mara told – it is just me speculating. I think Mara told Gettleman, if you're taking this job, we're trying to win now because he wanted to get Eli another opportunity at yep. a ring or at least a playoff berth. And who was the most immediate impactful player in that draft? It was Saquon Barkley. Yep. Uh, Quentin Nelson is more of a long-term guy. It's a guard. So in my opinion, everybody's entitled to their own opinion. I put that pick much more in Mara than I do get them. Yeah, I, I kind of 100% agree with that because this is a problem the Giants have organizationally. A problem that they have organizationally in the way that they go about picking their personnel and their front office people is Mara is picking, maybe not necessarily based off of who is best for the job, but who is best that's going to fit his narrative. And I know I just said on Talking Giants of, uh, oh, well, I'm a, I'm a guy that likes to skew takes to fit my narrative, um, which we all we all kind of do as, a, as a YouTubers and content creators. Um, and we even do it as fans. To, we have certain takes that to, to fit our narrative. But I think John Mara has been hiring that way. And he's been making certain decisions of people in the front office, not necessarily the best people for the job, but people to kind Same of- Same thing with Pat Shermer. Yes. Same thing with Pat Shermer. I, in my opinion, the only reason Shermer got the job- or I think they could have probably got maybe Josh McDaniels, who at the time was probably thought to be a better candidate, or or a Patricia, but Shermer was the guy willing to take on Eli Manning. So I think the initial problem, like you said, it stems from Mara. Um, yep. And I also wanted to bring up, and then we're going to start going, you know what, I'll ask Bobby. We'll start this question with Bobby, actually. Well, I'll just say, 
you saying they would have went McDaniels or Patricia makes me like, oh, thank God we got Shermer. Yeah, I'm not saying it would have worked out, but I'm just saying I don't think Shermer was their first choice per se. But I think because he was willing to take Eli Manning, he got the job. Um, but what, I, what was I going to ask you? I had a good question. I was going, oh, oh man, I just lost it. <laughs> what are my thoughts on Dave Gettleman? Well, we'll start there. What, what maybe maybe this maybe the question will circle back to me, but. Yeah, give me your overall thoughts on Dave Gettleman and whether or not you are leaning one way or the other in retaining him in 2021. Well, Call me I was a stupid idiot, I dare you. Call me I, a stupid idiot, I dare I, you. I was lucky enough to not be doing this back in 2018 when I get – like I I wasn't on Twitter but apparent, or, or YouTube or anything, but apparently that seemed like that was like a war between Giants fans between that, that year. So I'm glad I wasn't there for that. But here's what I'll say looking at it from 2020. There's two sides to it. One – and as a side I'm I'm leaning on is that at some point you have to play the results. And we can't – like there's cap space, uh, what you build. But at some point we have to look and be like, as fun as we're having right now, we're three and seven. We're three and seven, and it's like, oh, the team's moving in the right direction. Um, we have been the worst team over the last three years. I was cool with keeping bringing Gelman back if that meant keeping Shermer. Uh, my stance was either keep both or fire both. Keep both or fire both. I think – I thought Gettleman and Shermer had both done enough to warrant bringing back, and I think they had both done enough to being fired. Where Shermer, um, I love what he did with Jones. I like the way I, – I still wish we had Pat Shermer's offense with Daniel Jones, to be honest. Gettleman, I like some of his draft picks. Um, I understand – like, I'm, I don't hate the Saquon pick, and I honestly, I don't hate the idea of going for it. I know in hindsight it looks bad, but we are one year removed from a, a really good team, and – the entire wide receiving core got hurt, and you go out and sign some free agents, get Saquon. I wasn't, I, I wasn't against that team going for it. Hindsight, it didn't work out, but in the moment, I was. I mean, and I don't think it was crazy. I mean, we were a lot of people's sleeper pick that year, like to watch out for the Giants, you know, for them to come back. Anyways, the other side of it though is that in 2020, Dave, I I wrote down, I got my notes. James Bradbury, good. Blake Martinez, really good. Both those are really good. Kyler Fakra, good. Cam Fleming, eh, I would have rather brought back Mike Remmers, but they also weren't planning on Cam Fleming starting. Marcus Golden, good. You got I got a free six-round pick out of it. Yeah, good. Yeah, good. But you get the six-round pick. But even if they kept him, I thought Golden yeah. was the best peer pass rusher on the team still. Logan Ryan, good. Deion Lewis is a eh. Colt McCoy, obviously, he's a backup. Levine Toilolo, um, paid a little much for a third tight end, but I'm not mad about it. And then draft pick. Thomas, who I'm a big fan of, I know Mike was a big fan of him too, is a question mark right now. Um, as good as the last three weeks have been, it still is a question mark, especially when, you know, I thought I just did a breakdown of Wheels. I think he had his best game of the year um, this past game. And then I'll leave Beckton out since he's been hurt, but he is fun to watch. McKinney's obviously a question mark. Parrot, good. Holmes, good. Lemieux, good. Brown, eh. Carter Coffin, eh. TJ Brunson. I'll go out and say bad. I don't. I can't stand TJ Brunson. Chris Williamson bad, but they're both seventh rounders and Tay Crowder good. Yes, so, sir. <laughs> yeah, me and me and Mike like draft. Uh, we mostly uh, like align on like these these random people who's like, oh, I love this guy. Saw uh, the potential, you know. <laughs> yeah, speed, that's basically the like speed and potential, and if you change positions. So 2020, if you just if that was like, hey, this is our new GM and this was his off season, I would be like, that's an unreal off season. But where I lean is like, some point you have to play the results. And the only thing, and I'm a Daniel Jones guy, and you'll hear that on our episode, is Daniel Jones hasn't been good this year. He hasn't. The last couple of games have been good, but he has not been good this year. If these next six games he balls out, and I'm talking not game manager, balls out, then I will lean Gettleman stays. But if it's more of the same this year, where it's like good game, bad game, average game, then I would lean move on. Yeah, I let me just say with the whole Gettleman thing, I, I usually have my – my headphone on my right ear. I need to put it on my left ear. It's just a habit. So everybody's going to be able to see my right ear. It's a habit. I'm sorry. Get used to it. <laughs> Thank you um, for bringing that up. No problem. No, it was just on my bra. It was on my mind because, all right. So the issue is right now we're in a guest house and it's like we still bicker like brothers. Um, and it's like, <laughs> behave, behave. Don't, don't fight it. And we're, we're in front of company. So the, the, my final, my little thing with Gettleman, especially. I'll, I'll put a little pin in this, like a little caveat thing about how I can change my mind at any time. There has never been more of a let's wait and see conversation really in a very long time. 
<laughs> when it comes to this Giants team. And I usually hate having the take, let's wait and see. Because you know how boring our channels would be if we just, yo, we that's the appro- that, that is the appropriate, uh, you're right, though. That is the appropriate stance. It's yeah. not just with him, but this entire team. I don't, uh, I agree with that. That's been my stance the entire year. I, I agree with that. Um, now, what you said, Bobby, I agree with. And I am a guy that sticks up for Gettleman. I agree with. I would have fired Gettleman when they fired Pat Shermer. Uh, I have said that I would have fired him. I would have gotten a fresh start. But in my opinion, when you brought him back, and it's done, they brought him back. To me, that's almost a fresh start for Dave Gettleman. It's almost like he's a rookie again because you got a brand new head coach and you're starting a brand new regime. That's the way I look at it. And based off this offseason, I can't complain with the results. And in 2018, it is fair to bring up the point, in my opinion, that the, the cap space situation where they did have some. They spent it on Nate Solder. But I think all four of us probably agree that in the moment that was a good move or at least we weren't against the move. Maybe the dollars and cents, but it was necessary to get a left tackle for Eli Manning once they decided they were going to go for it. So I think we all agree. It's not like we threw our hands up in the air and said that's a horrible move. There's definitely been some bad moves. Don't get me wrong. Um, no doubt about it. But in 2019, he didn't have cap space. You guys bring up a thing. It was a $2 million move. He, he had no cap space to operate in free agency. This year, he finally had it. And when he had it, whether or not you want to say it's more Judge or more Gettleman, like Bobby said, he had on every free agent under the sun. And the draft, I think we all agree, was good. So in my opinion, when you decided to bring him back, which I actually think was a mistake, I would have started over at that point. But they brought him back. And it's a fresh start. And now you have a quarterback and a coach that are linked to Dave Gettleman. And if the team is exceeding expectations, they're 7-3 and three against the spread. They played very well the last seven weeks. It is my stance if they continue this, if they win even two games but continue to play competitive over the last six games, I am completely for keeping Dave Gettleman. But, Mike, I want to get to you. Yeah, uh, that's a lot to take in. You guys covered a lot of good stuff here. I guess I'll just give my overall view on things. I will say I do agree with, I think, what Justin said. No one likes a wait-and-see type of content creator. Like, give opinions. Come on. I just had to put that out there. But <laughs> anyway. When for, I was saying um, – I, I don't mean to interrupt you, Mike, but one of yeah. my most aggravating was like when I was like, Andrew Thomas needs to play left tackle. There's no use of putting him at right tackle. And people were like, do you think you know better than the coaches? It's like, no, <laughs> but it's like, it's the off season. We're like we're talking about it. Like, I like, it's, your, it's your opinion. Yeah. Or, or the, uh, the great term, uh, Twitter GM. Cause God forbid we have opinions about personnel decisions as fans. You know, it's yeah. ridiculous. As long as you admit anyway, it, you know? Yeah, exactly. Um, so Dave Gettleman, I wrote down some notes before this, the good, this entire off season. I loved it. How much of it is Joe judge influenced? I have no idea. No one has any idea. Some of the moves, you know, might tell you that it is the case because of the Ryan Conley being cut. And I think, you know, Corey Ballantyne this year and moves like that will kind of make you feel like Joe judge has more say than a guy like Pat Shermer did. But, you know, we had those. The uh, Bradbury signing was great. Martinez, Fackrell. Um, he's had some good draft picks. I think Dexter Lawrence is a good player. Will Hernandez, for the most part, a pretty good player. He's a starter in this league. Daniel Jones, we're not sure yet. The jury's still out, of course. We'll have to wait and see how that one plays out. But the misses are just – it outweighs it too much, in my opinion. I mean, Justin talked about the Saquon Barkley pick. Um, people will complain, well, you wanted Josh Rosen. Well, here's the thing. I know what a running back's going to give this team. It's never going to, you know, be the value of a number two overall pick. You know what a running back's going to do. A running back's not going to single-handedly win you games. It's not going to single-handedly change your franchise. We just know that. There's enough evidence now of these backup running backs coming in. The Miles Gaskins, the uh, the James Robinsons, they come out of nowhere and they're, they're oh, even, even on a team right now uh, with the Giants. You yeah, it's exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. So Wait, don't, running back yeah. production can be replaced. They're not Saquon Barkley. I get it, but it can be replaced. Um, so we have that, the Barkley pick, we have the Alec Ogletree thing, which looks even worse now because you know what? The, the worst thing about it was they traded Jason Pierre Paul for a third round pick, which I was okay with at the time because I figured they were going to rebuild. I'm like, okay, we're going to rebuild now after this trade. They decided to trade for Alec Ogletree, who had like the same amount of money on his contract compared to Jason Pierre Paul. I don't know if you know Giants fans all keep up with the Buccaneer. Jason Pierre Paul is still a really good pass rusher in this league, and the Giants can definitely use a guy like him. Not saying they should have kept him, but if they're going to trade him in that situation, start, start to rebuild. rebuild. Right, yeah. exactly. So there's that. Um, we don't talk about Sam Beal too much because he's forgotten about the supplemental draft 
draft pick third round, the guy who had like the chronic shoulder issues in college, he takes him in the third round. The Giants would have had a pick in that third round right around the time. And I know Bobby's going to hate this right around the area where Terry McLaurin was picked. Imagine if the oh, Giants man. had a wide receiver one and Terry <laughs> McLaurin. Not saying they would have taken him, but they would have had the chance instead of a guy like Sam Beal has been a disaster. Um, the Leonard Williams trade. I mean, look, you can have different opinions about it. You can say it's worth it. Um, I am never really on the side of trading for an impending free agent in a lost season when you were like two and seven at the point or at the time. Um, it made no sense to me. I think Leonard Williams has been great this year. We all know that, but they could have signed him in free agency because the Jets had no interest in franchising him. They had a new GM and, and Joe Douglas. It just made no sense. Um, and the and the, the worst part about that is Gettleman's answer. Well, we wanted to get a better look at him. He plays in the same stadium, dude. Like there's the worst answer possible. I mean, at least come up with a good answer for that one. You know, uh, Nate Solder, I defended. I will admit, you know, hand up. I defended it because they needed a left tackle. Turned out to be terrible, though. So I'm not the GM, so I'll, I'll blame Gettleman for that one. But I think at the time, it wasn't the worst move in the world. They needed a left tackle. Justin, you want to say something? No, my, uh, Mike, I, I heard you drop a little Gettleman impersonation. I want you to do it again. <laughs> what did I say before? What was, the, you, what was the impersonation? So it, was about, to, it was about Al Gogletree and Pierre Paul, I think. Wanted to get a better look at no, it. No, no. It was oh, about yeah, Leonard Williams. Williams. You wanted to get a better yeah, look at it. You know, Jordan Ronna will ask him, like, so why'd you – yeah, you know, Jordan, we, we just wanted to get a get a better look at him. You know, uh, we thought <laughs> wow. it'd be a good part of the team, like something like that. You know, it's not bad. I mean, I could work on it for sure, but it, it's the the answer made no sense. I'll put it that way. Um, I can do a good uh, I can do a good no holds barred. Remember when he, he remember when he was talking about Eli and uh, you know, oh, uh, well, Eli. Uh, all right, here we go. I'll, I'll just do it. You'll you'll know the context. Okay. Eli and I had an honest conversation. <laughs> no holds bad. He took me in the low post and won. But you know, there you go. That's that's it. I've been I've been working on. It. Well done. It's the that's only thing good. I can do. Pretty good, honestly. Um, right. All right. So back to the list. This one annoys me. You know, you guys know Fred Warner, one of the best linebackers in football. We yeah. took Lorenzo Carter and B.J. Hill, literally two in like three picks right before him. The Giants had two picks right before Fred Warner. They didn't take him. So like, I, I hate to blame you for that. It's the third round, but Fred Warner would have been awesome for this team. Um, I don't want to blame Gettleman completely for this one, but DeAndre Baker, I mean, look, even if I was a Gettleman fan and supporter, um, I still would have had to blame the GM for that one. Like he, he missed on it. Let's be honest. The guy had some, you know, work ethic issues. He was falling asleep in the practice meetings and stuff. So like, it's not even just the off field stuff. It was yeah, beyond. That's fair. The Bakers are fair He's innocent. Oh, yeah, that's it. I mean, watch him go to the Chiefs now and be great. So we'll see. But the Golden Tate, that made no sense to me when it happened. I thought Golden Tate did relatively well last year. He's just been, you know, he's he's had a weird season. A couple nice catches every game, but just not worth the contract whatsoever. You extend Odell Beckham, and then, like, you take this $16 million dead cat pit the next year. What the hell are you doing with that one? Now, um, now, now let, me, let me bring up my theory with the Odell Beckham. Go ahead. Yep. It was a good well, trade. I look well, it was back, definitely a good, good trade. trade. And to me, good that's trade. a pro yep. for Gettleman. But – the the Odell Beckham situation, it, the, he was coming off a year where he only played four games. So Gettleman had an, a choice there. If I trade him, you may not get near the value that you would have had you signed him and then he plays a healthy year and you trade him after the fact. So that's the way I kind of look at that. They made it, They might have said to themselves, we can't trade him. He's coming off a major injury in which he only played four games. Let's see if he can give us a year and then we're going to get rid of this guy. It's possible. Right. I'm not saying that that was the plan. But it's possible that they knew in the back of their head, if he doesn't clean up his antics, we need to bring this guy back so he's under contract and he and he provides more value for a potential team. Right. No, you're right, for sure. And I actually want to touch on this point before Justin said it earlier. Um, I'm pointing up. I hope he's above me on this thing, but I'm going to point up is. to him. Yes, okay. Um, now, people complain about Jerry Reese, and believe me, Jerry Reese was not great towards the end of his tenure here. I get it. But the cap room situation was so overblown. If you can come in here – and sign the highest paid left tackle at the moment and then trade for Alec Ogletree with the $12 million per year cap hit and then sign guys like Kareem Martin for three years, 15 million, Omame, three years, 15 million. It's not like the guy was strapped, you know, for no cap whatsoever. He made some moves. Um, there's only like five guys left on this roster from, you know, the Jerry Reese era, which oh, is why I didn't yeah. agree with uh, Chris's point before because, like, you know, I wouldn't call Gettleman this is his rookie year as a GM. This is his roster. He had a great offseason. Oh, yeah, no, 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 no. I'm not saying this is rookie year. I'm not saying you could eliminate the pass. But I'm saying when yeah. you decided to bring him back, it's a new era. That's the way right. I look at it. It's mm -hmm. a new era. I'm not saying he didn't make mistakes. Dave Gettleman has made mistakes, and I'm not saying he has nothing to do with why we're here, even though I personally think in 18 that had a lot more to do with Mara than anybody else. I think right. Mara was the driving force why we were trying to do two things at once. Um, yeah, definitely. So I put much more of the blame on Mara in 18 than anybody else. Um, but, no, I'm not saying – some of what you're saying is definitely – 
relevant, and uh, he definitely made some mistakes. But when you bring him back, see, I, my my mindset is I worry much more for Judge than anybody else. I don't want to bring in a guy here. that I love Joe Judge. I think Joe Judge is the long-term answer. And I don't want to bring in a guy coming in here. Say we win four games, five games. And you now bring in a guy that has no attachments to Joe Judge. Joe Judge is only going to be 39 years old. He's got no credentials whatsoever. And next year you have some injuries and you win four games, five games. You have some bad luck. He could easily say, this isn't my guy. I'm going out and getting my head coach. And I am not a guy that wants constant parity. I want stability with this organization. And even though I may think that Gettleman may not be perfect, the dynamic between Judge and Gettleman, in my opinion, worked this year. And if the team continues to progress, I am completely for bringing that dynamic back at least for one more year. You know, when right. I just I started my my point about, you know, we, we were talking about Mara versus Gettleman, how much influence does one have over the other? You know, and one of the points that I said is, you know, it's 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 a bad job in how you hire your front office and your management people around you if you're tainting the process by what you want out, you know, what you want a certain guy to do. So who's to say, you know, Chris, which it's totally false, by the way. We are not winning four or five games. We are winning six games and we are winning the NFC East. <laughs> but let's just say we are in a situation where we win four or five games. We want to force Skettleman out, whether due to IE retirement or um, firing. You know, w it, do we really want the Giants to do this again where John Mara is going to hire somebody based off of, oh, are you going to, first question, are you going to keep Joe Judge? If the answer is exactly. yes, we, we can that's continue with the interview. That's what I more than anything. You're now yeah. forcing the new, because that's what's going to happen. Because it's, it's what happened. It's what happened with what will Eli. happen again. I'm telling you right yeah. now, Mara's not going to move on from Jones, and he's not going to move on from Judge. So he's right. going to force the impending GM to accept both of them. You'd be doing the same thing all over again. And it's it's just, it's it, to me, it's chaos. I would that's I would the rather frustrating part. I would rather stick with what you've got for at least one more year. And Gettleman could retire. He's like 70. He could retire. But if he's gonna stay, I'd rather stick with what you got for one more year. Get more footing under Joe Judge. Get him another successful season, eight, nine wins, and then maybe the appropriate time to make the move. I just don't think this offseason is the right time to do it. I think we all can agree though, they did this whole thing ass backwards. Why, like <laughs> once again, why would you why would you fire the head coach and keep the GM? Like, can we do things at the same time? You don't have to do it that way, but it makes a lot more sense. Imagine if this past offseason we bring in like Nick Casario, who has the connection with Joe Judge, and he's here. Now we don't have to worry about this if the Giants have a bad 2020 season, which they are three and seven. That's the reality. We don't have to worry about well, what if this, you know, what if Gettleman gets fired and the next GM doesn't want Joe Judge? And like now you're settling for even worse GM candidates because they're forced to have a new head coach yeah. so the way they did the whole thing doesn't make sense to me but it's in the past now gotta look forward but to finish off on the Gettleman thing he went all in in 2018 whether it's a John Mara thing whether it's a Gettleman thing he's the man in charge so I get it but um it made no sense and I, I know Baba you said before you had some hope for that team I really you know being optimistic I said eight and eight so that was like I didn't have the highest expectations I thought Eli Manning was kind of done at that point unfortunately but um, you know, he set the team back a year and now like, I, I can't stand the fans, honestly, that say it takes five years to rebuild in the NFL. It, it does. makes no sense to me whatsoever. If they rebuild this thing the right way, this would be the season that the giants can be legit, you know, maybe even title contender. That's kind of crazy. If they to say. started in 18, I agree. Uh, right, yes, because yes. they started in 19, I think next year's the year. Uh, yeah, exactly. But that's I, the problem. that was the screw up, but that screw up to me is on Mara. I think Mara screwed this up. Um, and it is what it is. And, you know, and everybody's entitled to their opinion. We'll see what happens at the end of the year. But now what I want to get from all three of you guys, let's say they – give. all right, give me your final record prediction for the New York Giants as of today. And based off that record, tell, tell me not whether you'd bring them back, whether you think Edelman will be back. Justin, I'm going to start with you. Whoa. Because not because you're asking me to think with my brain when I'm when I want to think with my heart, and that's typically bad news. Realist, realistically, three and three with so six and, wins, six six wins in the final six, uh, six excuse me, six wins total, three wins out of the final six. Um, and I and I, you know, part of me, part of me says six wins does win the East, even though there is a situation where. If you're six and ten, but if the Eagles are five, nine, and one, do they still win because it's winning percentage? Which I think that's a yes. You know, that's math. This is not a math pod. Yes, we so. win that. <laughs> oh, if they, if they go five, no, we if they have five wins and we have six, we're in. All right, yeah. wonderful. So ign ignore all that. You know, but but also part of me is like, oh, but you know, if the Giants, 
when if the Giants get into the playoffs at six and ten, but they don't get it at five and eleven, is that really is that really that one win being in between five and six? Is that really going to be the reason why you bring back Joe Judge versus not? Um, part this you mean might Dave? A, you mean Dave Gettleman? Joe Judge? I'm coming. sorry. I'm sorry. Yes, Dave Gettleman. J- Dave Gettleman. We're keeping Joe Judge. We love Joe Judge. Uh, I deserve to take five laps for that comment. Um, <laughs> but really, really, where I think it lies is if we win a playoff game. If we win a playoff game, you know, not just get into the dance with the bad division, but if we would, if we somehow win a playoff game, which think about this, and I hate that I did, I hate that I did this to myself this week. The Rams, the Bucks, the Bears, the Seahawks. You know, obviously we didn't play the Seahawks yet. Um, I know the Vikings just got into the wild card contention dance, but especially the other teams in the AFC West and um, the Bucks, which look like they look like they may lose the AFC South to the to the Saints. We played all those teams well. And if we had another matchup with them when we're a little bit later in the year and we're not, you know, blowing double digit leads or, you know, we're not allowing teams to get off to big leads, at least, you know, there's part of me that thinks that if we do match up with them again, like, why not? And I hate that. I hate that we're like, we're, we're technically still a bad football team. And we have that mentality, but why not? So uh, at this point, I think three and three. And if we win a playoff game, I would definitely welcome Gettleman oh, back. Oh, if they want a playoff game, he's coming back. Yeah. In it, it, it my opinion, if they make the playoffs, he's, he's coming back. It, yeah. the, the, the gray area is if they, they don't. And and right. that that's – that's but if they want a playoff game, I'd be shocked if he's not coming back, especially because that would mean that you beat the Eagles for the first time in forever. You beat the Cowboys, which I think is what it's going to take, and you swept Washington. You went 4-2 and two in the division, um, and you made the playoffs. But, Bobby, go ahead, man. I want to get your take. Well – I, I, I was talking uh, about this with somebody else. Do you got every day, and I'm not doing this to like try to be funny. Every day I think about what if Evan Ingram didn't drop that ball on Thursday night football? Oh, yeah. Every day. Because it's like we're, we're excited now. But if what if, if the, he what if drop the that ball, we are what if the referees didn't call back two excited. touchdowns? What if the referee didn't call back two touchdowns against Dallas? Yeah. But at least I at least with the, the, the Eagles one, it's like, all right, he just catches that. Game's literally over at that point. There's no like. You have to play more. Like the game's over. You you know you run the ball three times. Game's over. Uh, so I just think about that all the time. So I I, I want to say three and three, but my like what would somebody else watching this team say? Would probably say two and four. Like I think we'll beat Dallas. I think Dallas would be probably a pretty not an easy win, but it'll be a win. Um, Cincinnati I think would win, but I don't think anybody's like you know like saying the Giants are going to stomp Cincinnati. And the Browns, I think, would be the other winnable game. Um, but also, like, the Browns are a better team than the Giants right now. Like, as much as I hate to say it, like, they are. Um, they have an awesome offensive line. Um, I love their offense with Kevin Stefanski. They're, they're a better team, and they've got talent on defense. Um, um, Baker Mayfield's up and down, but nonetheless. Um, but I'll, I'll say three and three, because even if we don't beat the Browns, I'm sure we could sneak out something, you know, it's the NFL. So I'll say three and three. Not winning the division, though. Oh, I think I no. think the Eagles are going to win three more oh. games too. I I, I think I, I actually I'll, I'll I'll spoil it. That's my exact prediction. I, I have the Eagles no. going. Uh, I have the Eagles going six nine and one. That's going six and ten. Um, and 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 my personal prediction, if that does happen, based off of everything, not just wins, the way the team would have played down the stretch and improved, based off what Amara said, in my opinion, Gettleman will be back playoffs or not if they win six games. That's my prediction. What about you, Bobby? All John Mayer has to do to justify bringing Gelman back is like, did we bring him back last year? Yeah. What did he do this year? A lot of good things. That's all they have to do. It really doesn't even matter about wins. Um, and if you guys notice this past game, they were talking, they were talking Gettleman up, and this is the best three and seven mm-hmm. team ever. It was almost like a commercial. <laughs> If you would ask me three weeks ago, I was telling people Gettleman is gone. Like, there's no way they bring him back. I'm starting to lean that I think they're going to bring him back. And for that right, that point right there, I wasn't in on the Joe Judge Kool Aid until this Mark Colombo stuff. That made me drink the Joe Judge. I freaking Kool-Aid. love that. And we're going to that. that I was, part. I was with like, I don't care if they fire Joe. If, if my idea was like, you fire the GM and you let him do whatever you want. Don't have any. You got. And I love Jones too. Like you guys know, I'm a Jones defender, but my mindset was: if we get a new GM, let him do whatever he wants. Let him bring in a new head coach. Let him bring in a new quarterback. 
Let him run this organization and let's do it right. Get the guy who you think's the best for the job and trust him. Stop tell stop telling yourself, John Mayer or Joe Judge, what what to think. Bring in the GM who you think is the best for the job, whether it's Ed Dodds or who else or somebody we didn't even know don't even know the name of right now, and let him do the job. And that's still my stance. Even if, like as much as I like Judge, they need to do that. They need to start doing this the right way. Um, let who let, whoever the GM is, let him run the team. Let him run the team. No, that, that, that is my stance if they bring in a GM, which is what I, why I don't want to make change because I like the dynamic we have right now. I, I like Justin, yes. <laughs> which is why I want to stick with Gettleman. That, 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 that what, that's what it boils down to. I like the dynamic we have. I think Judge could be a, night, a, a great coach for this team, and Daniel Jones starting to show progression. So that's my mindset. I'm not saying for the next five to ten years, but I'm saying for next year I'm on the Gettleman train. But, Mike, what about you, buddy? Yeah, Bobby, uh, he hit the nail on the head right there. I was saying this a month ago. Um, complete, I was with you. Like, bring in a new GM because at that point we thought Kittleman was gone. I was, sure, I was recently. Uh, I was with him almost. You even, know, I, yeah, I, yeah. I was almost even you. Kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I was with him. I said, you know what? Who's Joe Judge? He hasn't accomplished anything as a head coach yet. If this new GM wants somebody new, you bring him in. Like, I, I'm sorry, I liked Joe Judge at the time, but now from what I've seen the past two weeks, and especially that Mark Colombo story as you brought up, which is awesome in my opinion. Like, that's a Bill Belichick type thing. You have one group struggling, you oversee that. I think they brought in another guy who's now currently the offensive line coach to oversee that group as well. And then Colombo gets pissed, and you know, all this stuff happens. He's gone. I loved it. I am completely in on Joe Judge. I think he's the right guy to turn this franchise around. I hope I'm right about that, but I have really good feelings about him. Um, I really hope he's here next year. I mean, even if like a guy I love, like Ed Dodds, if you tell me he has to come in, but he's kicking out Joe Judge, that would make me think a lot. I don't know if I want that anymore. Like I love Joe Judge. I think he's the right guy for the job. But anyway, for the you know rest of the season prediction, I think I made a video about this, and I ended with six and ten, which I think had the Giants based on what I think the Eagles are going to go missing the playoffs by half a game. I'm sorry, Justin. Um, but we Bobby, all three of us got the same six ten six pretty nine, much. One. And Bobby yeah. mentioned it before. Don't take the Browns lightly. The Browns are not a bad team. And people say I'm a closet Browns fan. I do watch them closely. I love Odell. I love Baker. That team's not that bad. Like they they run the ball very well. Um, you know, I love Stefanski's offense. Of course, it's not like that's an easy W. So. I can see the Giants going two and four the rest of the way. Realistically, I hope they get to three and three, and maybe there's a chance they even win one more game and go four and two. I mean, that's yes. kind of stretching it a bit because it, it is because they have a tough schedule. Can they beat a team like Seattle? Can they beat an Arizona? Can they beat a Baltimore? I have no idea. It's a very tough ask, but if they can do it, then that's wonderful. And if you know they do make the playoffs, I think Gettleman's chances of staying here. I would say around 60%. If they miss the playoffs, I think it's probably below like 30%. Because if you're John Mara, how do you look at this and go, you can't even win this terrible, historically bad division in year three of your team. You can't win this division. Like what the hell is going on here? I know he had a good off season last year, but you have to take in the first two as well. Cause those were his off season. So you can look at it as like, we have the right head coach, but this GM has overstayed his welcome. And if you can't win this division, then like, what are we doing here? And if they made the playoffs and won a game, which I wasn't even thinking of, but one of you guys brought it up. So I'll just say it. If we won a game in the playoffs, that was you. Yes. Um, I say 95% chance Gettleman stays, which Hurts my soul, but I'd rather see a Giants playoff win. I would completely yeah. love that. Um, I, I left the 5% in there because there is always that opportunity you can for retire. to just retire. That's exactly yeah. why I put it in there. So, yeah, yeah I'm going to go 6-10 and 10 being realistic. Uh, um, yeah, 6-10 and 10 to finish being realistic. And based on the Eagles, they can't be this bad, right? I know Carson Wentz has struggled this year, but the Eagles are too talented to be this bad. You know, I feel like they'll get their stuff together at some point. I've been saying that about Baltimore's offense the entire year, and now we're in week 11 and it hasn't happened yet. I feel like teams like this figure it out. And Philly's too talented in my opinion, but, hey, we beat them. We should have beat them twice this year. Maybe this is who, who they are, and we'll find out. But I think the Giants find a way to go 6-10 and 10 this year, but it really depends on what Philly does to close out the year. All right, I think that's fair. I think that's a fair opinion. I, I think 6-10, and 10, no matter what, he comes back. That's my opinion. 5-11, uh, and 11, I think it's very debatable either way. And I think he could definitely retire. Uh, that's my opinion on Dave Gettleman. And I'm looking forward to seeing how it all plays out. I just want constant stability with this organization, and I like the direction that they're going in. Whether or not they decide to keep Dave Gettleman, Joe Judge needs to stay, and I don't want to see a dramatic uh, change at that quarterback, and that's why I am supporting Dave Gettleman at this point in time. This went a while, and I absolutely love the conversation. We still got a whole other topic that I want to talk about, and Bobby is the offensive line specialist, and it's why I am a big 
Kettleman fan from when he took the job because that's all he talked about. Offensive line, offensive line, offensive line, offensive line. And I am a bit, that's where I think the games are won and lost is the offensive line because I think the whole offense stems from that. That makes your quarterback better, your running back better, your wide receivers better, and ultimately your defense better because you're able to control the clock longer if you have a strong offensive line. You win that time of possession, you set up better field position. I want to talk about the offensive line. We drafted three hog mollies in this year's draft, as Gedman likes to say, rounds one, rounds three, rounds five. I want to talk about the rookie's performance. I want to talk about what you think about the decision to move on from Mark Colombo. Um, and what you – yeah, and, and we'll start there, Bobby. G- give me your overall outlook on the offensive line. Maybe give me some und- individual breakdowns and just the unit as a whole. Well, I'll, I'll start with the, the decision to move on. I love that decision, especially when you hear that Judge has been working intensely with the O-line the last three weeks. And the eye test, we've just been saying that they've looked better. And the numbers, I mean, they're running back yards doubled. Um, you know, 40, you know, I think it's a uh, 40 more yards per game total. And that includes the QB. Um, so the offensive line has looked better and the numbers say it's better. Um, I'll go, I'll go rapid fire. Andrew Thomas. I was an Andrew Thomas guy. I pound on the tables that he's the best left tackle in this class. Now, if you made me go back and redo it, not counting injury, I would go Becton, Wills, then Thomas. And that was the, the order before I had was Thomas. Wills and then Becton. Um, Becton has been lights out, but he's been injured. Right now, I would still go Wills, although I do think Thomas has more upside. He's more athletic. He's more of a mauler in the run game, and he just has more natural recoverability where I think Wills... like People said that Andrew Thomas is the most pro-ready, and I was an Andrew Thomas guy. I dis- I disagreed. I thought Wills was the most pro-ready. Wills' technique is kind of tapped out. Like His technique's not going to get better, where Thomas had way better production than any of them against the best competition. But it's like he still needs to work on his footwork, his punch, he leans. And I did a breakdown of it after the draft. Like, what are you people talking about? Like, he doesn't have a high ceiling. He has the longest arms. He's the most athletic. Don't bring up 40 time. Look at the 20-yard shuttle. I could preach. I could spend 20 minutes on why the shuttle is more important than the 40 time for an offensive lineman. He had the best of that. He had the longest arms. So I'm happy with the Andrew Thomas pick. He's looked a lot better the last three games. And – Although out of the last three games, the Eagles one was not was probably number three. It was nice to see a bounce back after how bad that Thursday night Eagles game was, which was a low moment for him. So I have that bounce back. So right now I am I am happy with Thomas. Who uh, Mike, before I do this, who do you like better right now? Who do you think's better? Will Hernandez or Shane Lemieux? Hmm. I think Lemieux makes too many mistakes in pass protection, but at the same time, Will Hernandez isn't perfect himself, but Will Hernandez is in year three, so I'd rather play Hernandez, to be honest with you. I think Will Hernandez is much better in the pass protection, and I think he's better as a run blocker. And people, the talking point was like, well, look, since Hernandez left, how good the running game has been. It's like, well, that's when we just found out that's when Joe Judge was working with the team. (laughs) And we've seen, you know, I do the film stuff. I've seen noticeable stuff different. And people talk about Lemieux's pulling. I thought pulling was the best part of Hernandez's game. Like he's a good puller too. He'll he'll bench press people when he's pulling. So Hernandez is better than Lemieux. But like you said, Mike, he's Lemieux's a rookie. You're very happy with what he did for a fifth round pick. Gates, I was a big Gates guy just because I was like, he's a good football player, and we don't have a good enough offensive line to not play a good football player. And Spencer Pulley sucked. I think he's finding oh, his role as a center. Yeah. I do think. That possibly, I know this is crazy. They, I wouldn't be surprised if there was a Lemieux at center, Nick Gates at guard. If they move on from Kevin Zeitler going forward, because I think Nick Gates would be a better guard than center. I don't know. If that's just a theory I have. I haven't really worked on that a ton. Um, but Nick Gates, I've been happy with Kevin Zeitler. Kevin Zeitler hasn't been like the All Pro self, but he's been the most consistent. Cam Fleming has been bad. Um, he's not like wretchedly bad, but he's been just be- like he's really. Be- he's, I think he's worse in the run game than the pass game. And Parrot has been good, but Parrot has issues where he just lets you get outside of him, and it looks cool because like he'll never get played. Parrot will never have a play where he looks silly. Like there's like he plays like so up and down. He doesn't let you go on the inside, so he'll never get look silly on a play. But defensive ends can bend the edge around him. Um, but for a third round pick, that's stuff you can work on. So I'm happy with that one. And then, I mean, yeah, that's all the guys that have played. So I think, I think you hit it all in the head. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I am in, by the way, I'm in complete agreement with both of you guys. I said that on my channel, and some people got at me because, like, they had the same talking point you just said. Well, they, the offensive line's played better with Lemieux, but 
I'm in complete agreement with you. I, I think Hernandez is still the better prospect, and I don't even do film breakdown. Just from watching the game, it's clearly evident to me that Lemieux has struggled in pass protection. And Chris, people are like, well, they're like, so you're just telling me that Hernandez, like, then they just got better? I was like, yes. Like, Thomas has just been better. Like, it's not – like, it really has nothing to do with Lemieux. And it's, like, been so mind-numbing. Um, but, yeah. And then I also say on Hernandez because Hernandez was a second-round pick. He was hyped up. Hernandez is not going to be who we thought he was going to be. Mm -hmm. He's not going to be the all-pro Pro Bowl. But I think Hernandez is an above-average guard who would start for probably every team in the NFL. Obviously, there's probably some teams that have like great guards that I'm not thinking of, but I think he would start for probably every team in the NFL. It's just a matter of expectations. He's above average um, to like, you know, to good. He's never going to be the elite guy that we thought he was going to be, but I don't, I, I don't think we should throw him away either because of that. So is he closer to Sorbert's skill level or is he closer to Chris Snee's skill level with, with that? I'd take either one. <laughs> he was like he's. I think. Well, I mean, I think he did, he's nothing. He's not like Soybert. Soybert is a different player. No, I'm. I'm talking about like Soybert was more or less your average guard. Yeah. And then Chris Snee was like yeah, one Soibert. of the league's Soibert. best. Yeah. Soibert. Soibert. Okay. Yeah. I don't I, like I, saying bad things like average about one of my football heroes and Rich. Like those five are my football heroes. No, the other thing I want. The other thing I want to ask you about Hernandez, though, if this offensive line around him gets better, which we think it will. I mean, you know, Andrew Thomas, they they put a lot of emphasis on it and better coaching. Maybe you will maybe he will look like that guy that was worthy of that early second round pick with with because it's a unit. It's not an individual you know it's not an individual position. Yeah. And Solder was so bad last year. Like people forget how bad like people and at Thomas's worst, I I I was like he's still better than Solder. People forget how bad Solder was last year. Like they made fun of like that inside move Thomas was like you know that same defensive end literally put Nate Solder in a spin move like it was it was embarrassing. <laughs> now the issue is I don't like to bring that up because Nate Solder's like a great guy. He's going through a lot. He's like so I he's one of my favorite people. But there's times where I'm like trashing Nate Solder on the timeline and I'm like I feel like a dirty person because I'm just like this great human being. I'm just like this guy sucks. He's the worst left tackle in football. Even if Andrew Thomas sucks, he's better. And at one point, his wife followed us, and it's like she doesn't follow us anymore because I have trashed that dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Mike, I'm going to bring it to you on the offensive line, then we'll go to oh, Justin. Um, what do you think of the uh, the progression of the offensive line and the uh, overall performance, and you know some of the individual guys? Yeah, it's it's been great the last few weeks, and I was saying to myself, "Wow, Mark Columbus must have been doing a great job the last few weeks." <laughs> I said the same find, thing. We find out the truth. It's like, oh, well, Joe Judge was over there doing most of that. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, my opinion about the Columbo thing is like, if if you're that bothered by someone overlooking you and your head coach helping you, if you have like, if you're that egotistic where you don't want the help, then the hell with you. Get out, get out of my organization. Like, I don't care. Get, we're done with you. We have a new guy now who's like was with the Colts in eighteen with the Dolphins last year, former Patriot. Um, a Assistant. So, like, you know what? Former He'll giant. be fine. He was with the Giants. And giant. Oh, 408. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Oh, 408. yeah. All right. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm fine with that, honestly. But for the offensive line this year, Andrew Thomas was, you know, he was my favorite tackle throughout most of the draft process. I made that last second flip flop to Wills because I thought he was safer. And Bobby talked about it before how, like, you know, Andrew Thomas was like the most quote unquote pro ready guy. I didn't see that whatsoever. I thought, I thought Wills was, to be honest with you, even worse when it had been second for me. So, you know, I, I think based on, the expectations of he's going to struggle at first, which he struggled massively at first. But now we're starting to see the ceiling of Andrew Thomas. He's like 22 years old. Um, I think he has a lot of time to grow. He'll start the rest of the year. And like the fans that were like, oh, you got to release Thomas bench. I'm like, just stop. Let the guy play. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Um, moving him to right tackle. Like, why would you do that now? You know, it, I, I know Matt Parrott had that one star. I forget who it was against. Honestly, he might have been Washington that one week at home. And he played really well at left tackle. And it's like, well, does Matt Parrott play left tackle? And honestly, I didn't know what to do. But I think the ultimate right move was to go back to Andrew Thomas, which they did. Then he struggled against the Eagles. And now he's finally getting back on not, you know, not last week, but, you know, four weeks ago in that Thursday nighter game. Um, now he's getting back on track. And I think we're going to see much better things from Andrew Thomas going forward, coming out of the bye, more practice time. He's now used to the NFL. Hopefully we see a better Andrew Thomas going forward. I'm definitely not quitting on him. He's still one of my favorite tackles from that draft. And hopefully he ends up being the franchise left tackle that we all want and we need. Um, for the left guard position, Shane Lemieux was a nice surprise. I didn't know what to expect, honestly. I mean, you know, he's, as, a, as we said, he struggled in pass protection at some points, but definitely proved to be a mauler in the run game at some points, which I like as well. He's made his mistakes. He's a fifth round pick. He's young. 
And I think he has a future on this team. I've always said, I know some of you guys want Zeitler back next year. I think Lemieux might be the right guard next year because, you know, Will Hernandez still has his fourth year of his rookie deal. The Giants are not going to release him. He's not going anywhere. I still think Will Hernandez is here next year at left guard. And we put Lemieux at right guard. And I think Zeitler ultimately gets cut to save the $12 million. For Nick Gates, I mean, I know this is Bobby's guy. He loves him, and I could see why. I mean, the former tackle in college, and he came in here playing center. Um, I remember all the way back in the offseason when he favorited your tweet saying, are you snapping a ball? He said yes, or he favorited the tweet or something like that. So we know he's been practicing at center. It was kind of a rough start at first, some rough moments at first. He's been getting progressively better and better each week. I love it. Uh, you talked about moving him to guard. If they find a better center, sure, I'm, I'm down for that because I think yeah. he can play guard. We saw it last year, of course, but um, it was limited time, but he was great. So, you know, he could do that. But the thing I love about Nick Gates is all the versatility. He can play all yeah. five spots, which is awesome. So we have that in our back pocket. I got him on a nice contract before the year. Shout out Gettleman, Joe Judge, whoever gave him that contract. Nice job to be proactive Good on that. Good point. I never before bring that up when I'm talking year. pro Gettleman. Good yes. point. I'm, I'm going to start saying that one. Good one. I love I love that move because like, it's like if Nick Gates goes off and has this great year, which he's having a good year, he's going to ask for more money. Be a little proactive here and give him the contract before the year. So they did a good job there. Zeitler, there's not much to talk about. He, he's not the all pro that we like kind of hoped for at first, but he's very solid. He's the most consistent guy on this line, and that's pretty much all you can ask for i don't expect him to be here next year if he is here on a smaller contract i'll definitely accept that but like still i don't want to pay the guy 14 million dollars then at right tackle parrot fleming i mean fleming i thought was a good stopgap guy just to get in there and start the first half of the year whatever it is i hope we see more matt parrot going forward because we know what cam fleming is he's fine um he's had times where he's looked awful times where he's looked all right and for Matt Parrott, you did mention it, Bobby. I saw this. There was an exact play where this happened where he got beat outside by Brandon Graham and got right in Daniel Jones's grill where he nearly threw a, a fumble, basically. I think he, uh, Graham hit his arm. So, you know, Parrott has his struggles sometimes with the technique, but I love his, you know, body size and just the way he's uh, – He's just a good player, Matt Perry. Like, I really think if they give him time and he grows into his body and learns the technique and hopefully gets a better offensive line coach going forward, we will see Matt Parrott be a productive starter in this yeah. league. So my feeling about this offensive line, much better than it was back in, like, 2018, 2017, the Jerry Reese days. I think we have at least, you know, two or three starters going forward, including, you know, everyone with Nick Gates, um, Hernandez, Thomas, pair i think at least three of those guys are going to be solid starters in the future so i think the giants are going in the right direction no one's an elite player right now but they can move in that direction they're most of them except for zeitler are all very young so they're going in the right direction here guys are you ready to put super high expectations on lemieux and then when he doesn't reach them we're going to say that he sucks are you guys ready for because that, <laughs> sure. that's coming within like you know 13 or 14 months. That's well, that, that happens every year with the Giants. This year, like, he regressed. Year. He was yeah. a pro bowler his rookie year. Now he's not. He's <laughs> well, let, let, this year was O'Shane Zimenez. I was telling everybody, pump the brakes, pumps the brakes, pump everybody saying nine sacks. I said, pump them. The year before it was Lorenzo Carter. Every year, you know, we put we put a uh, full sack. I was hitting, I was hitting the gas on, on Zimenez. I'm not going to lie. So I was I. It so was I. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, um, but yeah, I, I, I agree with most of you general points there. Uh, one question I didn't ask either one of you guys. I'll ask Justin. One um strategy that I was very surprised and I, I confused with when the New York Giants decided to do it, and it seems to have worked out, was the musical chairs, was the shifting tackles in and out, in and out. What was your initial thought process on that? And 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 why and do you think it's do you think it's how much do you think it's really paid off? I think if it's planned, and this is something that I've gone back and forth on, because the offensive line is the group and the five-man unit that needs the most time to gel together. They move together. They move as one. Um, it's almost like a symphony, you know, and then when one person, when one person messes up, it kind of ruins the whole band. Um, I like that metaphor. That's really good. Good that job. Good. Good, good job, Justin. Um, so when you kind of Put a put a wrinkle into that with you know uh, putting Matt Parrott in at right tackle for a series, putting Matt Parrott in at left tackle for a series. You know, I, I think it may in my brain it's like oh it, it, that may throw the group off. Um, and I'm thinking you know as a player, I don't know if I would like that. I don't know if I would like that as a player. You know, kind of losing my momentum in a game and losing my reps and losing my in person reps because I am a person that does value in-person reps more than more than um, mental reps. I don't really see there being a big value for mental reps, which is why I'm glad Andrew Thomas started at left tackle and in, you know, God willing, he's going to end the year at left tackle. Get those mental reps. Uh, get, excuse me. Get those physical reps. Um, 
But if they are planned, and this is something that is a very, very welcome sign from this coaching staff compared to past coaching staffs, a young player has promise, may not fully be ready to rock and roll yet, but whether it's on the offensive side of the ball with you know the young guards and Matt Parrott, or it's on the defensive side of the ball with Cam Brown, Carter Coughlin the last few weeks, they've been getting reps. They have been getting reps situationally. And that's been really fun to see that, you know, I think Judge realized that this is a young football team. This is a rebuilding football team. This is not a team that has, you know, five solid cemented starters on the offensive line. You know, when Andrew Thomas is one of them, especially for his play towards the first quarter of the season, the first half of the year. You know, he was a guy that was not a fully cemented starter at left tackle because of the bad play. And we were, we were getting close to having conversations of do the giants think about moving him to the right side, pair left, or even Fleming left. If it got that bad. So if it's situationally, if it's planned and if it's for the purpose of playing young guys, I am all for it. Um, and I think these guys are bought in more importantly, the starting five, if any of them are asked to come out at any point of the game for any reason, even if they want to get Shane Lemieux reps at center, which would be bizarre. Um, <laughs> They've given I, him reps at fullback. Yeah, yeah. That's true. <laughs> so I think these guys are bought in, and I think that's the most important thing. Yeah, I, I'm completely with you. I, I was pissed when I first saw it. I'm like, what the hell are they doing? But you know what? I've learned not to question to Joe Judge because most of the time it works out. So um, I was, I, you know, I've, I've been very happy with the overall offensive line play, and I really started to see it um, in the Rams game, the second half of that Rams game. I started to see them get that run push. And ever since then, you've really seen it progress. Yeah, the pass protection at times has been lackluster, but overall, we've run for over 100 yards five straight games. And the offensive line has more to do with that than anything else. And I am really encouraged by that. I don't know if you want to put that on the coaching or, or, or Gettleman or whatever. I don't care. That, to me, was the biggest mission statement coming into the year. Um, and that is what I've seen the most progression. I've really seen progression throughout every unit on this roster outside of tight end, but we don't need to talk about Evan Ingram. But the quarterback's gotten better. The offensive line's gotten better. The overall defense has gotten better. Um, and I love the direction of this football team. And I think it starts with that offensive line. I think that is wh how this team is going to win football games over these last six games because that controls the clock and that helps out your defense. But any last thoughts, guys, before we close this out? We're I winning the one. East. We're I winning like <laughs> the NFC I like East. I don't care if you hate it, but learn to love it. <laughs> oh, this new O-line coach. Like, Colombo seemed like one of the guys. Coach Dugues. Dugues or whatever they call Googs, him. Googs. 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 Yeah. Did you call him Coach Douche? No. Yes. No, I would never Maybe. do that. I, especially <laughs> against him. He'd probably kill me. He is a snarly dude. Those guys are the exact opposite type of coaching staffs. Now, I will say, that type probably will get the, both, the best out of the offensive line group, but they're going to hate practice going forward, which is a good thing. I like yeah. it. I like it. What about you, Mike? Anything else, my man? No, not really. I mean, I'm looking forward to our next segment here, honestly. I mean, I know we'll start on a different Zoom call and all that stuff. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, Justin said we're winning the East. I think we're beating the Bengals. Let's take it one week at a time, oh, and on. hopefully we get there. I'm going to use the cliche, one week right at here. a time. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. I, I completely agree with that. We're on the Cincinnati. <laughs> because if we lose the Cincinnati game, playoffs are over, in my opinion. That's that, you know, it's yeah. one game at a time. Let's beat the bank. That so people say I pronounce it improperly, so I'm just going to say Cincinnati. Let's beat Cincinnati, and then we got five games ahead of us, and we'll see where it goes. I want to beat there. Joe Burrow so bad. I just want to. I, <laughs> I think we're. I think so we're bad. gonna. I, I'm going to bring that up real quick. I think we're gonna. Um, Burrow, even though he's been really good this year as a rookie, he's only got six touchdowns against any other team but Cleveland in seven games. Um, and I think that we have a, a defensive coordinator in Patrick Graham that is going to do a hell of a job uh, giving him different looks as a rookie. And I think the Giants are going to create some turnovers. I'm pretty confident going into that game. I don't think we're blowing them out, but I do think the Giants are going to win that game by three or four points. But um, I want to say thank you guys for coming on. And if you guys have not done so, subscribe to all three of these guys. Well, they're Justin and Bobby are on one channel. And, of course, <laughs> Mike's on the other. Subscribe to both of these channels. They all do a great job. I love watching all their content. And, of course, watch the other podcast. We're doing this for three hours, guys. Check it all out. Thank you guys for tuning in, and we'll see you soon.